Hey guys, welcome to The Sounding Mind, the loud inside voice that speaks the truth and nothing but the truth to power. This is the channel that focuses on exposing the hypocrisy of the left agenda. Oh, with everything going on in the world right now, and after Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez told us last week that the Hunter Biden laptop story or the corruption of the Biden crime family is only half a fake news story with everything going on, that shouldn't really be the focus. And while the left continues to lecture us about the lack of priorities in the political world, the left on Twitter are showing us exactly what they mean by political priorities. While China disregards U.S. and Canadian airspace and mocks Joe Biden on the world stage, while it seems we're on the brink of World War III and now trains are derailing all over the country, the left is focusing on a picture of Carrie Lake. Yes, you've got it. These are definitely the people who have their priorities straight. These absolute clowns are getting upset on Twitter because, frankly, Carrie Lake did the right thing and refused to stand during the Black National Anthem. In other words, no national anthem. So we need to talk about this false outrage, debunk this nonsense, and, of course, completely erase the leftist narrative. We have a lot to talk about, so let's play the tape. All right, folks, take a look at this from the UK Daily Mail. America has one national anthem. NFL fans divided as black national anthem, Lift Every Voice and Sing, is sung at Super Bowl 57. The Black National Anthem was performed before the Super Bowl for the third time in a row, causing outrage on social media. Cheryl Lee Ralph, the star of the comedy series Abbott Elementary, performed the anthem on Sunday night ahead of Super Bowl 57 between the Kansas City Chiefs and the Philadelphia Eagles at State Farm Stadium in Glendale, Arizona. And this was the headline from the Fox News online page. Photo goes viral of Carrie Lake refusing to stand during Black National Anthem before Super Bowl, a photo of former Arizona Republican gubernatorial candidate Carrie Lake attending Super Bowl 57 has gone viral, but for reasons you might not expect. The former news anchor turned GOP firebrand was seen sitting during the controversial playing of the Black National Anthem ahead of the game, which took place Sunday at State Farm Stadium in Glendale, Arizona. And here's the viral photo, which is seemingly causing lefties' brains to explode. The lefties' dimwits are chiming in on Twitter. They're telling you she's a nasty, evil, abhorrent racist. The main contention I'm seeing on Twitter is that Carrie Lake chose to leave the stage while the Black National Anthem, which is really a song, was playing. Actually, it isn't a national anthem. She clearly dislikes black people if she is seated. Of course, the same deceitful communist strategies. What do you mean you disagree with the Black Lives Matter movement? You must despise people of color. You obviously believe that black lives are unimportant. Of course, that couldn't be further from the truth, Kari Lake then clarifies. I'm against a black national anthem for the same reason I am against a white national anthem, a gay national anthem, a straight national anthem, a Jewish national anthem, a Christian national anthem, and so on, Lake told Fox News Digital in a statement Monday. We are one nation under God. Francis Scott Key's words ring true for every single American citizen, regardless of their skin color. James Weldon Johnson's Lift Your Voice is a beautiful song, but it is not our national anthem, she continued. 
doesn't exactly seem so controversial to me. She also retweeted a statement from Royce White, which writes, Y'all got white transgender lesbians teaching black history and excluding Malcolm X. But I'm supposed to be mad at Carrie Lake for saying we are one nation under God, one anthem for everybody. Isn't that a good thing? What kind of backwards race baiting is that? Beautifully put, and I believe Kari Lake was very correct in not standing. All Americans sing the same national anthem, which is the only national anthem. It is by nature inclusive. The same progressives who constantly talk about inclusivity also tend to be the most polarizing when they support crap like this. You know, if there is a black national anthem, why aren't there also national anthems for Jews, Asians, Muslims, and those who support gay pride? They should all be ours. Actually, if you're being inclusive, I mean, no, standing up and honoring the single flag and national anthem that unites all of it is the finest way to be inclusive. Anything else causes conflict and is part of some sort of plot to continue to divide Americans. And good on Carrie Lake for refusing to stand up to woke divisive tactics on issues like this. There's one clip that always seems to come to mind. It's actually a clip from the Will Kane podcast from Fox News. It's racist to divide us along the lines of race and to be exclusionary. That is not an inclusionary act. You know what's inclusionary? One single national anthem that includes everyone, not two, that doesn't include everyone. What is going on here? Why is this complicated? How could this possibly be spun? And it would be. It will be spun that somehow this take is racist. This, here's, I got news for you. This is the anti-racist take, okay? To see each other as individuals and human beings and to be inclusive and holistic about one nation under God, regardless of race or creed or ethnicity or gender. What a weird world that now division is tolerance. I, I don't understand what we're doing, but I know that what we're doing as inexplicable as an invasion of Chinese balloons and as destructive as those balloons being armed with EMPs or poison gas. I do know that. And that, in my opinion, is the most rational way to understand history, culture, and nationalism unity. Undoubtedly, different cultures and music representing those cultures exist. But at the end of the day, a thriving country and, of course, a thriving melting pot must come together under a single set of fundamental cultural and societal principles. Not to mention, Carrier is free to act whichever she pleases if Colin Kaepernick is allowed to kneel during the real national anthem. The Star-Spangled Banner is the anthem for all of us. Countless people have lost their life protecting and defending what that flag represents. What should be taught in school is the origin with particular emphasis of the men and women Americans that sacrificed their life to make sure the flag stayed flying high in the face of the British bombardment. On a side note, I skipped the opening ceremonies, but I did watch back Chris Stapleton's rendition. Best since Whitney Houston's. For most Americans, the fictitious national anthem can then be played while Carrie Lake is seated. I'll only call attention to that little instance of hypocrisy before moving on. Actually, everything is a bunch of made-up rubbish. That is even true of the Black National Anthem. It's meaningless virtue signaling drivel. So she didn't stand. Anyone take a look around at what others in the suite were doing. Texting, talking, drinking, etc., etc. While she sat there quietly. But no, the lefties' media is talking about Carrie Lake for one reason. There is a process and procedure for the National Anthem. What are the rules for playing the national anthem? When the U.S. national anthem was first recognized by law in 1931, there was no prescription as to behavior during its playing. On June 22, 1942, the law was revised, indicating that those in uniform should salute during its playing, while others should simply stand at attention, men removing their hats. There is nothing written for playing, lift every voice and sing. Problem solved. We are one nation with one national anthem. Standing for somebody singing another song is not a requirement, and playing a second song and labeling it an anthem just makes sure we stay divided. I would not have stood for that song either. A particular race does not have a national anthem. They can call that whatever they want, but it is not a national anthem. There is only one national anthem. 
You are aware that the black community is dealing with serious issues. This is a serious conundrum. It's a ridiculous nonsense to think that singing along to a certain song during a sporting event can instantly improve people's lives. It's worthless corporate public relations drivel about white guilt and salvation that serves no one at all. To be honest, I would find something like this disrespectful if I were a black person trying to rectify the wrongs of the past, seeking greater economic opportunity, safer environments, and better infrastructure for my people. You won't be getting any of the desired policy changes or real practical changes to improve your quality of life. But what you will hear at the Super Bowl is a false national anthem. What a slap in the face, I tell you. The final minor topic I want to cover in this video is something I hinted at a little bit in the introduction. Remember when Alexandria Casio cortez told us recently that the Hunter Biden laptop and Biden crime family stories were just a diversion from the real important issues, while AOC is actually focused on important issues like tweeting about a picture of Elon Musk sitting next to Rupert Murdoch at the Super Bowl. These lefties are out of control. They're absolutely unbelievable. But I guess at least it's good entertainment. That's all I got for you guys today. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. I'm going to get out of here now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.